So hello and welcome to this new uh, Gaia Sky tutorial. Today we'll, we're gonna talk about datasets and SAMP. Um, Gaia Sky, most of the data that it uh, is displaying comes from datasets and um, these uh, come from different sources. Some of them get loaded automatically, some others um, basically you choose them when you install or you launch uh, Gaia Sky and um, others you just load them from files. So we're gonna see how all of these work together and um, we'll also uh, explore the possibility of sending data from other um, astronomical software packages like uh, Topcat or Aladdin. Okay, so I'm just uh, starting uh, Gaia Sky now and once it's up, I'll uh, full screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so here we are. So by default we have just a star catalog, which you can see in the background and some basic uh, data, which is the solar system. This uh, does not come from a data set, but this is something that uh, that's required. Um, even though you can modify this, but uh, we'll see how, how to do that later. Uh, maybe not in detail, but I'll just hint at it. So if we open the control panel, uh, we see there's these data sets pane here we can go ahead and open it and here we can see we have uh, the DR2 default catalog um, we have a tooltip here which tells us some um, it, it uh, contains some extra information we have the Earth cloud data set we have the SDSS galaxy data set also we have a couple of star clusters data set one is uh, an old uh, Milky Way star clusters uh, catalog the other one is the open clusters DR2 catalog. Uh, okay, so uh, what we can do with each of these data sets, we can uh, mute them or um, hide them. So now I, I hit the um, DR2 uh, data set, so the stars. Um, we can also, so if we enable star clusters, we'll see that we have two different uh, sets of clusters in yellow and in orange. So we can, for example, hide the yellow ones and only look at the um, at the uh, DR2 star clusters, etc. So um, if you can see that here, you we have uh, some extra information, which is the type of dataset and the type of objects that the dataset contains. So first, for example, in DR2, uh, it says slot LOD slash others. This means that uh, this dataset uh, is a levels of detailed dataset. For example, in the Earth cloud, uh, it says internal, SDSS it says internal, uh, Milky Way star cluster says it internal, and also in the open clusters. When we load uh, data directly from a file, this would say something like uh, file. When we get the data from SAMP, uh, it will say SAMP. And as, as you can see here, these two are clusters, these are galaxies, etc. Okay, so how do we go about uh, loading new data? So we'll just, uh, for example, remove the star clusters data sets, both of them. So remove this one also. And now we can use this icon here uh, to load a catalog. And we would uh, just um, navigate to the folder where we have our catalog, we um, can load uh, catalogs in CSV or VOT uh, formats. Um, the CSV has to be in a special uh, constructed in a special way that uh, that uh, is uh, documented in our documentation pages. So let's let me just go uh, here and go to Gaia. Um, Sky docs. So we'll just um, remove this one. And here we can uh, probably find something like um, data sets. So let's have a look at this. Mm and still data provider. So here, um, basically this is a documentation about uh, what you need, uh, so the column names. Uh, when you're using VO table, it, it's actually got metadata, which uh, 
contains information about what each column is and the, the unit, uh, the reference system, etc. But uh, that doesn't exist for CSV, which are just plain text files. So we use column names, and here you can see um, the column names and the um, units that we uh, need uh, to load the data. Okay, so let's just um, go ahead and try to load a catalog. So here we have um, the OC cluster ZR2, which is actually the ZR2 um, star clusters catalog. Let's just click at load, and here um, a new dialog comes up and it asks you what do you want to load and we have three options. The first one is stars with uh, positions, promotions, magnitudes, etc. We, we need to have these properties in order to load stars. Uh, next is uh, generic particles. This means we'll use only the positions and then we will shade the particles uh, with a specific uh, set of properties that we choose when loading them. And finally, we have star cluster. Since we are loading a star cluster catalog, we'll click this. And here we can choose uh, the particle color. For example, I'll, maybe I'll choose this screen here and the uh, label color. I'll choose this uh, light blue for the labels. And this is the component time, which is basically the, the type of objects that this dataset contains. So here it's uh, clusters. Uh, that's the default. So I'll just go ahead and load this. And as you can see, um, we have the clusters loaded with the right colors. By default, it selects the, the, fir the first object in the catalog. So let me just select the sun. And as you can see, um, this is uh, the whole catalog which, which we just loaded. You can see the catalog here, um, OC clusters, that's the one that we just loaded now. And it tells us uh, where it comes from. So here is the path. Okay, so um, what about catalogs which are uh, loaded by default when you start Gaia Sky? Well, we can um, have a look at uh, the settings uh, dialog and come here to the data tab. And here we have uh, a list of catalogs that, um, that we have available. So we've downloaded them. How, do, how did we download them? So when you start Gaia Sky for the first time, you get to download um, manager which uh, you can basically use to get uh, data otherwise you can also use this button here which says data download and here you could just select new catalogs and download them there's um, Gaia catalogs which are based on uh, Gaia uh, data releases data packs uh, there's basically the basic uh, the default data pack texture packs these are, these are high resolution textures other catalogs these uh, contain uh, white dwarfs, uh, depending on. So these are anything which is not Gaia. So SDSS, galaxies, etc. Uh, and also we have uh, 3D meshes for different uh, stuff. So you could just uh, get the data here if you need more. Otherwise, uh, here you will have a list of the data that you have locally. And uh, each has a description, the, the size, the number of objects, etc. So um, finally here you can uh, select what happens when there is no, so what happens at start basically. So you can, um, you can only show the catalog uh, selection at startup when there is no catalog um, selected by default. This is uh, the default option. Or you can choose to always um, show the catalog selection at startup or to never show it. So um, there's another option which is using um, using a flag which is minus C. Uh, when you start GSK, if you use minus C, it will show up the uh, catalog selection. Um, okay, now I'll just, uh, as you can see here, I have not selected any catalog and here it tells that uh, only show the catalog selection whenever there's no catalogs selected. So I'll just close this, I'll close the sky and I'll launch it again without flags. So now uh, when I start up, since there's no uh, catalog selected, it, it prompts me to select one. So I'll just select the bright uh, cut from the R2 and start. Mm. 
These are uh, basically the catalogs which get loaded at startup. Um, where are they actually in the disk? Well, um, if you want to see or to find out where your data um, are stored, you can always come, not here, but to the help dialog or just press H and system. And here there is a, in the path section, there's a data uh, entry, which tells you exactly where your catalogs are. So if we put that into the scratch part and let's uh, go here, this is my data folder. And as you can see here, I've got a few, um, a few uh, JSON files which describe describe the catalogs that I have. So if we do, if we check for all the um, files which start by catalog, you'll see I've got these ones and these are uh, the ones that um, that appear in the catalog selection. There's also uh, these files which uh, always get loaded. So if the files uh, start uh, by auto load, uh, these will get loaded. So let's bring up KSKI again. Okay, so what we can do now, uh, for example, we could try to load uh, different star catalog. So I'll just remove this DR2 bright uh, catalog and you'll see now the stars are gone. And I'll select uh, the Hipparchus uh, catalog. So I select this, these are stars, uh, the label color, maybe orange, why not? This is a magnitude scale factor that uh, will get subtracted from the magnitude of the star. So this is to make the stars brighter. Uh, this only applies uh, in this session, so it will not modify the catalog. It will just apply this uh, scaling factor when loading the stars. So I'll just go ahead and load the star catalog. And as you can see, we have now uh, Hipparchus um, in the background with the star uh, labels in orange. Okay, so what we can do now is uh, we can have a look at uh, SAMP. So SAMP is a, it stands for a simple application messaging protocol and it's basically a way for astronomical software packages to share um, catalog uh, data and other kinds of uh, data. So I'll just send this to the scratch pad and I'll start up TopCut. Okay, so um, SAMP is a client server protocol, so um, it means that uh, all of the um, communication is handled by a main uh, actor. In this case, Sky does not provide a SAMP hub, which is basically the one which uh, gets all of the clients and uh, administers them. So we need something else to, uh, to act as a hub, and in this case, TopCut or Aladdin uh, they, they are good uh, software packages which provide some apps. So now I'll uh, bring back uh, Gaia Sky. Maybe I'll make it a bit uh, smaller. And um, it's actually already connected. And to check that, we can use Control D to bring up the um, debug interface. Uh, disregard the frames per second value because uh, I capped it. So you can always cap the frame, uh, the frame rate at a certain value. So now it's it's capped at 30 because I'm recording it for... for um, uh, so the frame rate of this video is 30 FPS. And uh, if we open it, we can see that here at the bottom it says SAMP connected to a hub. Uh, we can also check it here in TopCut SAMP status and we can see that there's a Gaia Sky uh, client here. So what we could do now, for example, is um, just uh, use tap uh, to access the RE um, database. So let's just look for Gaia RE and that's it here, just select it. Uh, we see the tables that it offers. So what I'll do is um, I'll create a Cone search with the uh, Gaia DR2 uh, stars, and I'll probably use maybe 1.5 degrees. Um, 
I'll increase the number of uh, stars, so something like this should be enough, and I'll run this query. And now what it's doing, it's sending the query to the uh, ARI server, and it's already back. So we can see here, that's our table. That's what it looks like, uh, source IDs, uh, right ascension, declination, etc. So lots of parameters here. Okay. Uh, we see that it has uh, 20,000 stars, and what we'll do with this is mm, we will, let's see, we'll come here and activate the send sky coordinates, and now we'll send this table to Gaia Sky. And as you can see, Gaia Sky gets the data automatically, and these are stars. We'll um, use the um, labels so we'll, we'll set a different color for the labels so for example green okay and just load this and the data is already there so since so as you can see this is a cone search here the data set is Hipparchus and this is the thing that we just got from SAMP as you can see the type it says SAMP we can uh, highlight the data set so maybe this color is not the best so this is green Okay, so you can see all of these stars are now highlighted in only in this data set. Uh, we could do the same with the stars in Hipparchus, which are in yellow. Um, the ones that came from DR2 through SAMP are green. And you can see they extend, uh, they extend way beyond uh, the Milky Way disk. Um, I think uh, we also have selected uh, so to broadcast the row, so as you can see when I click on stars here um, Maybe I should have um, The activation status here sky coordinates in top cut uh, 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 Send row index. Yeah, that's that's what we need uh, in order to select the star and not just uh, point a guy sky into uh, a, In a to a direction so let's try again. Okay, now it works. So as you can see, let's just close this. When I click on a star here in Top Cut, so this star gets also selected in Gaia Sky. And if we do it the other way around, it should also work. So let's see. Yeah. So as you can see, the star which ends uh, 38, 24 is the one which is selected also here in Top Cut. Um, so this is a nice way to uh, send data from uh, one software package to uh, another. Uh, there's a lot of uh, applications which support this protocol. Um, and yeah, it's, it's a very nice way of doing things, I think. So what else can we explain? Yeah, so the star catalog uh, data sets, so we have some properties here. We can add filters, for example, so these get computed in real time. Uh, to do that, uh, I'll probably go back to the Earth. I'll mute this thing. And I'll use, I'll just use the Hipparchus uh, catalog. So um, here, uh, this is a size increase factor that applies when we uh, highlight the data set. So as, as we said, each data set can be highlighted by clicking here. So you can see all of the stars get um, brightened up. Uh, maybe you, if we use three here, the stars will get uh, much larger. Yeah, as you can see, this is just for visibility, um, for visibility's sake. So let's just put this back at 1.5. And we could also uh, create filters. So for example, um, we just want the stars which are a certain distance from the sun. So let's see, maybe at uh, 100 parsecs from the sun. Okay, and now as you can see, there's mm, less stars which are shown. And we'll just zoom out and see what our cat looks from the outside. Yeah, so as you can see, uh, it looks like a ball because we cut at a certain distance. Uh, we can highlight the stars and yeah, yeah, we can see it very clearly now. 
Um, we can increase this uh, maybe 150 and you will see that when I click OK the ball will get larger. Yeah. So you see we can also combine it with uh, more uh, rules so uh, for example uh, we'll just use uh, where the right ascension uh, let's use the declination where the declination is um, larger than 45 degrees and the declination so this is uh, smaller than 45 degrees and larger than minus 45 and let's see what happens so as you can see this looks like a torus because um, we are just uh, showing the stars in the catalog which whose distance is uh, less than 150 parsecs and whose right ascension is between minus 45 and 45. So if we go to the Earth, we will see that there's a cut at um, 45 degrees and at minus 45 degrees. We can actually bring up the um, equatorial uh, grid. And as you can see, this is um, 20, uh, 30, 40, and that's 45. So uh, this is a nice way of uh, filtering catalogs on the fly, just to uh, be able to inspect them, uh, to be a bit more flexible in what you're showing. Um, so I think that's, uh, that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. Um, yeah, I think I would stop here for this uh, one. Um, if you find, if you have questions, just contact me, and I'll see you guys in the next uh, tutorial. Bye bye.